I do ask again um, that cameras are on, that we abide by our two minute rule. I know we all look like walking zombies at this point, but that's okay. We can embrace the look um, as we are all doing good work for our community um, this evening. Um, next on our agenda tonight is the ratification of collectively bargained contract. There is a motion to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Wachusett School District and Unit B, which is speech language pathologist assistants, certified occupational therapy assistants, physical therapy assistants, as so presented. Is there a motion on the floor? Second. Second. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion on the motion on the floor? chat okay. seeing none we'll go to a roll call vote member amos amos yes member ayala ayala yes member bennett yes brown, member brown yes. member dennis dennis abstain abstain member gustison yes member haber haber yes member ember Member, yes. Member Kirschenbaum? Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoie? Lavoie, yes. Member Longbelil? Longbelil, yes. Member Mills? Mills, yes. Member Mitchell? Did Ben come back to us? Let me check. Hold on one second. I don't think Ben has come back to us, so we will pass him over. Um, Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? Uh, just to make sure, we're voting on what? We're voting on the motion to ratify the MOA between our district and Unit B. Yes. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? Woodland, yes. Member Young? Adam, are you with us? Let's see, I'm not seeing Adam back with us at this point. Um, and the chair votes yes, so the motion passes. Next on the agenda tonight is public hearing. I have four comments to read um, for public hearing. Three, actually. First tonight, um, we hear from Janice Delaire at 3 Julie Ann Circle in Rutland. I'm writing you tonight as a parent of a seventh and 10th grader. My questions refer to the most recent school committee meeting on Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020, regarding parent choice of remote versus hybrid. I attempted to, I attempt to ask my questions in chronological order. Slide one, who is the most vulnerable? Increased hybrid hours, can you list how many hours from how many to how many in concrete numbers, please? Some additional students means who and who, who, de and who determines which ones. Slide two, school schedules hybrid. Exemptions on holiday Monday, omitting all Wednesday all remote. Does that mean instead of Monday, Tuesday, those students will be Tuesday, Wednesday? Can you clarify that? Slide three. School schedules remote only. Not on the slide, but Dr. McCall says there's still a possibility that we'll need additional support from other teachers. Teachers will continue to work with kids in the remote setting while at the same time, those students will have to have support from their own staff who will be supporting remote only students. What does this mean? Please be specific and clear how and in what capacity. Are you hiring more teachers, paras? Why are they getting more support than hybrid students? From slide clarify, they remote only will have synchronous online instruction with their in-person classmates. How much time, full period or half a period? And as well as asynchronous learning opportunities, again, for how much time and when? Is the at school teacher instructing hybrid in school students at the same time as remote only students? For example, on Monday period two, does, it, does the teacher instruct all students simultaneously? And if so, what does that look like? Teacher in front of their computer so they can stay on camera live as they have been directed to. Will the teacher be able to walk around the room, perform demonstrations, have in-person students get out of their seats to do activities? 
other forms of instruction that typically keep students engaged in learning? Or instead, does a teacher and the in-person students stay put in their seats the entire period? Additionally, is the, is the teacher required to wear a mask when students in the classroom? If yes, then students viewing the teacher remotely will see them with the mask on. The following questions refer to the rest of the slides. Are days in school going to be full or half days? It seems like at the high school they'll be half. Please clarify. Dr. McCall says reports from HVAC company will be done in a few weeks. Is that after the October 5th date? Why weren't any online formats purchased for remote the full remote students as other districts have done? If choose remote, will any special education services be in person? For example, counseling. If you choose hybrid, will special education services be in person? Again, that's from Janice. Next tonight, um, we have a statement from CPAC. Through COVID, the CPAC has closely partnered with the SPED office through ESY planning, and more recently with providing updates on the parent Q&A. The CPAC appreciates the extra time spent by the SPED team, along with union reps, principals, teachers, and parents. However, we have more to do. We have outstanding issues we need to escalate to have resolved. In a similar manner, the school, com school committee is creating more transparency around risk, issues, and plans. CPAC is also pursuing more documented updates for outstanding risk, issues, and plans. CPAC will be holding their next meeting on October 5th, 6.30 via Zoom. At this meeting, we'll be holding our yearly elections and getting update from Christine Smith on the reopening for the schools for our special needs children. We wanna let school committee know that as parents, we're very concerned about education and well-being of our children. The most vulnerable children were scheduled to start school during the summer, but with unexplained last minute changes, it didn't happen. Desi had made it clear that in-person instruction was necessary for special needs children, yet we still have zero children in school in our district. How do we find this acceptable? We understand times have been difficult, but there are schools such as Bay Path that have every IEP child attending school in person daily, yet we still have zero. The plan submitted to school committee called for the most vulnerable children to return October 5th for half days, proceeding to full days the following week. On Friday, parents were notified, notified of yet another change to the plan. Now the limited number of students will only receive half days for three weeks. Why do they need to be part-time instead of in building fully accessing the curriculum? How does this affect the much larger group of students that are to return that following week who receive no communication from administration? We're asking that the committee put our children first, to find a way to get them back in person immediately. We ask that you hold administration accountable and responsible for finding a way to educate our children. Every day a child doesn't attend in-person school, education cannot be accessed, skills regress or disappear, and their independence is lost. Our children cannot afford to wait any longer. Finally tonight, we hear from Crystal Roy. Hello, is the decision for hybrid learning effective for the remainder of the year? As noted in the presentation, if five communities are green or unshaded, we should return to full and time in person. Can the district please explain if there's plans to return to full and time in person? And if not, why not? Thank you. Those are our public hearings from tonight. Um, now for chair's opening remarks, which all seem a little odd, um, three and a half hours into our meeting to have opening remarks. Um, but I do, I do want to welcome any public still viewing this meeting tonight for hanging in with us tonight. I do want to thank the school committee for taking very careful consideration on the special meeting tonight. Um, I really enjoyed having everyone. Uh, Malia, do you mind if I finish or do you need a point of no, order? I was looking at the time. Do we need to vote to extend our meeting after 10 because it is 10 o'clock right now? That would be Sorry. So I don't want to interrupt you, but I also don't want us to not meet. No, let, let, yes, that would be in order. Um, Second. All right. Roll call vote. Amos? Yes. Ayala? Ayala, yes. Bennett? Yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Member Dennis? Dennis, no. Member Gustafson? Yes. Member Haber? Yes. Member Imber? Bob? Okay. Member Kirschenbaum? No. Member Lavoy? Lavoy, no. Member Longville? Longville, yes. Member Mills? Mills, yes. Member Mitchell? 
I believe he's not with us. Member Atmar. Atmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, yes. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Young. Adam is not with us as well. Chair votes yes, and I will be brief. Um, so briefly tonight, um, I was really proud of everyone's work earlier tonight to make the motion work um, and to make it work specifically for the students in our district, um, as is all of our aims. We may come to these meetings from very different places with very different backgrounds, but I believe our aims are all the same, which is to ensure, I'm getting some echo, um, which is to ensure um, the strongest possible education for our students in the district to ensure a safe and comfortable environment for them to learn in. I do want to remind all of us that we are still in a pandemic. Um, two of our our towns have gone into the yellow region um, in the past week, um, and we still need to be mindful of the fact um, that over 200,000 people have died of COVID-19. I would also like to take the opportunity tonight um, to reach out to the wider administration of Wachusett. Um, I learned very adeptly today that we have not leaned on our principals and assistant principals as we should during this time, that they are a valuable resource um, in these difficult times, and that um, we should be doing the best we can to help support not only the district administration staff, but all the principals and assistant principals as they are all working in tandem um, to ensure the best possible education for our students. Um, as chair, I'm gonna welcome them into our meetings. Um, to see if they have anything they'd like to add in the future um, and to ask them what they feel um, might be best um, in their particular communities moving forward. With that being said, our students, our brave students who need to get up for school in the morning, welcome back um, and welcome to doing this late at night when you have school in the morning. I do, um, I will send notes to your first period teachers letting them know that you might be uh, in your pajamas still when we wake up. Um, but uh, Kamichi and Catherine, anything to add? Uh, who wants to go first? Should I or? I believe you are. You're on. Okay. You're on. Um, then I'll go first. So yesterday, uh, Kate and I, we had the opportunity given by Mr. Biando. We're very thankful for this. Um, to visit the high school, go inside, and take some pictures of the cafeteria and other classes uh, inside the facility. Uh, those pictures can be found on the Instagram, the Facebook, and they're also on the homepage of our website, which again can be found on the Facebook page or the Instagram page. Uh, we were able to see how the chairs and desks were placed in the cafeteria, uh, in the classrooms, the, the spacing between them. Uh, we were able to see in the science wing because they don't have desks. They, well, they have rectangular desks, um, not the ones where you have the chair and the desk right attached to each other. Uh, we were able to see a variety of classrooms and a variety of setups in each one. Yeah, so we are very grateful that Principal Biando gave us the opportunity to do that yesterday to show students what the school year might look like or those classes might look like when we return to hybrid learning. And there's still some work to be done, but the school is almost ready. Um, to that end, this weekend we had SATs at the high school, and then they're also occurring this next weekend, October 3rd, I think is this Saturday. I don't know. Uh, I have to be there, so. I should probably figure that out. Um, our clubs are starting to be back in full swing. Um, this week we had, I think, four or five new clubs meet, including our Think Globally Act Globally Club. Our um, student council met open to new members this week, and um, our Mountaineer volunteers also met. Um, our librarian has been doing a great job allowing students to come pick up a return book so that they can still do some free reading during this time. Um, Chromebooks have also been distributed to students that have lost their Chromebooks or broken their Chromebooks or anything like that. So that's being done outside the high school. Um, virtual college visits for seniors started this week. So any like colleges that's signed up to come to the school, our guidance allows seniors to meet with them and talk about anything like that. And then we had nine students in the 2021 Nas earn the National Merit Scholarship um, program based on the 2019 SAT or PSAT. And so we had nine seniors that actually were awarded that honor. So that was another big thing. Thank you. I like the good news report. Those, those, those are 
very heartening at, at 10 o'clock at night, but I really do appreciate it. And keep bringing that news. I'd love to hear more um, as you guys progress through the school year about what you're doing academically in these remote sessions. Um, and also if you have time, and I know you guys are super busy, you're doing a great job of your advocacy, um, to hear what the middle schools and elementary schools are doing as well. Um, love to hear what's going on with them. Um, next on our agenda tonight is the superintendent's report. Does the superintendent want to uh, highlight anything from his report? So uh, thank you, Chair Weeks, and uh, thank you to you know, our, our two student representatives, uh, you, you know, in terms of sharing the information around, uh, you know, what's going on at the high school, uh, the setup. You know, one of the things that will be going out <clears throat> toward the end of this week will be um, the entry plans for each one of the buildings. Um, principals are adding pictures and, you know, steps that um, will be taken in terms of bathroom use and hallway, um, you know, how the hallways will work, how recess will work, how lunch will work. Um, you know, that way, I, you know, ultimately kids and parents can take a look at um, what Davis Hills are going to look like uh, when they end up going back to school or Glenwood or Central Tree. So um, it, it's, it's an awful lot of work. Um, and, you know, kudos to the principals for, you know, working on this. We started talking about this, um, you know, weeks and weeks ago. And this is really, uh, a, you know, a culmination of, you know, an awful lot of time and energy that's gone into it. Um, I also want to just, you know, again, send a shout out to our, our tech support staff. Um, Barry Sklar has been, uh, you know, going well above and beyond uh, in terms of what he has been dealing with. And just to let you know, there has been a, um, we have some of our newer Chromebooks actually have a, a processor that is causing, um, or Google is not necessarily talking to the processor, Google Meet. So we've had um, some of our schools where we have new Chromebooks has some issues associated with uh, connectivity and so forth. So Barry has been working um, on a workaround for this uh, probably for you know a good week and a half to two weeks. Um, and I think he's finally come up with something that is going to ultimately help um, but uh, it's really not an issue that we're dealing with um, in particular. It's something that is uh, nationwide. Uh, so um, I know Google is working on this and uh, Barry has spent an awful lot of time just trying, trying to you know, figure his w a way around this so that we can you know, help support the teachers you know, and the kids moving forward. So, and again, I just want to, you know, we had uh, an, a meeting earlier and I wanna you know, thank all of the members for their their points of view, um, uh, the conversation, it's, you know, I hear all of it. And, um, you know, my administrative staff uh, hear it as well. And, you know, we're, we're ready to ready to move. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. McCall. Um, rather than go around the table, because we've we've spoken a lot already tonight, I'll just go to hands. Um, looks like member Mills has the first hand. Um, just, I, I, I really appreciate all the work from our, our principals. Just two quick observations. One, you know, they don't work for us, so I want to make sure that we're not reaching out to them too much that we go through the superintendent. But also, if they're going to be sending out reports about welcome back plans, please, like from our, the hours we talked earlier today, please let's not have that so confusion about this is what lunch looks like before you've decided if there's going to be lunch. I mean, just please don't make sure that those create more confusion after all that we just went through. Thank Good point. Member, thank you, Member Mills. Member Lavoy, you're next. I have a few questions or comments on the report, and Dr. McCall, if you could respond to them, if you could, I'd appreciate it. Um, first of all, the I appreciate the the amount of work that Barry's doing, and there were a couple of things that did concern me. So it looked like he had responded to over 200 tickets or so within a day, and that. That just concerns me is, is do we have enough support to be able to respond to those people that are having um, challenges immediately? I understand a day is a good response time, but thinking about a student perhaps not being able to access a class, do we have the capacity to perhaps um, get to things from a first call resolution or be able to resolve those or, or support that? Is there a need for additional staff to support um, students, whether we go to hybrid or not? And that might be something that you you look at as a follow up item. The other the other piece that I I do appreciate is it looks like and um, 
it looks like a few a few meetings ago I had asked the question about the impact of the number of additional students leaving. And it looked like my conservative estimates were actually conservative and we're going to be looking at perhaps a, a $3 million or so hit to the budget next year um, based upon enrollment numbers. And seeing that we have 300 plus or so students that have left this district that we have funding for from last year's budget, even though we're on a 112th, how can we best utilize that to be able to absorb less of a hit next year and if we do absorb that three million dollar hit what are we looking at to be able in the impact for that and again if you can answer any of that but i think we have to start forward thinking about that because those are real life scenarios we're going to be facing yes those are those are great questions matt uh, and again th those are the things that have been kind of percolating in my head and in superintendent's heads you know, across across the Commonwealth right now because you know, we're all in a, in a very similar situation. So um, you know what we're what we're looking at again, we have to be careful about buying ahead and so forth um, using funds from one fiscal year for uh, items in, a, in another fiscal year. So um, we're always cautious and careful with that. but um, you know we're, we are looking at ways in which we might be able to save it during you know FY20. I'm sorry, FY21 um, to help support FY22. Uh, it, you know, in reference to whether or not it's going to be a $3 million hit to the budget, I'm not sure uh, because you, there is an awful lot of talk. And uh, I think I spoke spoke about this, um, you know, maybe at the last meeting or the meeting prior to that. There, There's a, there's a movement right now uh, through the superintendent's uh, organization, you know, as well as uh, through local uh, state um, representatives Around ensuring that it, you know next year, because it's it, this is it's an abnormal situation. It's it's not something that um, it, you know it's unprecedented. So it really puts all districts at a disadvantage because there there have been so many kids that have either been you know homeschooled or have moved on to private schools. So um, there's a talk around modifying the Chapter 70 um, formula so that there you know the funding deficit would not be as drastic or dramatic from one year to the other, um, you, you know, as well as that hold harmless piece that, uh, you know, I've talked about in the past. So those discussions are occurring. Uh, I, I know Dan has been talking about that with his MASBO group as well. So, um, you know, we're all, we're all kind of thinking about the same thing. If, if I can pull together some more details around that, Matt, um, so, you know, maybe talk about, okay, here, here are, um, you know, four or five ways in which we're already looking at uh, saving for next year. Um, I, I, I can do that for my next report. Thank you. Thank you, Member Lavoy. Uh, Member Gustafson? Okay. Um, one of my questions actually was related to that, so I appreciate um, that question about the budget. Um, and Daryl, could I ask, um, is there a chance that we may be able to get a preview of that at our business and finance meeting upcoming? Because that's one of the questions that I had. Sure, I could because give it a we're shot. We're meeting, I think, in next, 10 days or something next week. Um, yeah. So that would be helpful. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have two other questions. Um, will you be sending us the numbers as of October 1st? Because I was surprised that those numbers were actually still the same as they were at our last meeting. Um, and October 1st is in three days. So early next week, will we be able to get updated numbers? So what I'll do, uh, Malaya, is... Um, when we run our October one numbers, I typically have Jay Howe who uh, oversees our power school um, mm -hmm. programming. She will kind of say, okay, we're, we're, you know, here's the information, but it's not official yet. Let me, right. let me go through it. Um, and I actually look at the information for each <clears throat> school in looking mm -hmm. at the number of kindergarten kids. Uh, first. It's going right. to look really different this year. So um, it's going to take us a little while. I don't want to put anything out there after October 1 until it's a little more official. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll wait to do that. Okay. I, I was mostly concerned that the numbers in this report were from like two weeks ago and we hadn't had even updated numbers since. So I was using that as a logical point, but yep. it would be helpful. Okay. Um, the building plans that you mentioned um, that the buildings are doing, are those going to be online for reference or will they be in power school like the handbooks or on the yep. website? Yeah, so they'll be they'll be online. So what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll probably have a link 
in um, on maybe in, in the main web page, each school will have its own link in the same way that it does for its uh, handbook. Okay, good question. Um, two more quick things. Um, one is for Christine. Is Christine with us or no? Right, Malia. We're we're almost out of time, so if we can make them super quick, that'd be okay, great. Okay, I'll just I, I can email it to her. But I know some special ed students had a question about her report and the very last line of it. Um, that specified testing would depend on the students' team. They wanted um, some people I've heard from have wanted to clarify if that was the in school team only or the entire team, including mm -hmm. parents. The way it was worded was sort of ambiguous. So you can answer that later if you'd like. But that is a question. Um, I can answer that really quickly, um, Megan, okay. if you allow me to. Yeah, that, that would be wonderful, Christine, if you can. Sure. So the team always includes the parents. Okay. That was my interpretation. Thank you for clarifying. Um, and the final question was about uh, legal. Um, there was a report, a piece that mentioned transportation and that legal is working on a settlement, perhaps, or settlement discussions with AA and Vanpool. Is that for this year or is that regarding the spring? Because I thought we were done with the spring and I thought this year we didn't need one. So I was, uh, that was a little ambiguous what type of settlement that was regarding. That's my last question. Right. So, I, and again, that's something that, uh, you, you know, we can uh, talk about when it, I think it comes back to legal sub. Okay. So we don't know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're meeting tomorrow. Legal meets tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, Member Long Bulio. Um, I had uh, a question about the high school schedule, the calendar for the high school. Um, is that question in order in this meeting? Yeah, of um, is it part of the superintendent's report? Um, Daryl, is it part of your report? I don't. I don't well, think if so. you want to ask if go ahead and ask and I'll, I'll try we to can, answer. If, try, if not, I can put it as a request for information, Linda. Sure. Yes, thank you. Um, um, I had a concern about the uh, fact that um, at around noon or so, the high school kids would be getting a grab and go lunch and then heading home basically to finish the day with two, two, uh, two sessions online. Um, I, I understand you can't fit everyone into the cafeteria in an efficient way, but I don't understand. I, I think it seems to me that we ought to try to have um, some of the kids eat in their classrooms, maybe split the classes, have some of the kids eat in their classrooms, have some kids eat in the, in the theater, and some kids eat in the cafeteria, and that way everyone can stay at school um, and finish the day at school. Right now we only have half days, two half days in school. That's my concern. So good concern. Uh, it, it's a discussion that uh, we've had with uh, Principal Biando. Uh, kind of ad nauseum because again, you know, I, I, I've pushed back around this as well. One of the main issues that we're dealing with is uh, not only space, but it's also coverage. So it's it's time, it's space, and it's coverage associated with watching. Um, gosh, you know, when we're talking about the number 250 kids uh, during four lunches, or 250 each lunch if you do four lunches. Um, and the way it's, it's broken down now, we'd have to break it up into five or six lunches. So with the, with the spacing that has to occur uh, w when masks are off, you have to have the six feet, uh, you know, all the way around a desk. Um, it, it's, it's almost impossible, Linda. And what we're doing is we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, we're going to inter interrupt an entire schedule um, to try to fit those lunches in. And the way it's broken down right now, those lunches are off of a long block. So because they're off of long block, it, it, we can't make a six period long block or, or not a six period, but a, um, a three hour long block. That's, that's how it would break up. Okay, well, if you can maybe continue trying to think this through, I think that would be important. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Member Otmar? Thank you. So my uh, question uh, actually kind of builds off what a member of had mentioned earlier in regards to uh, student enrollment and potential costs. And I think and business and finance might be a better a venue to get this information, but I think it'd be helpful if we could look back at enrollment trends for more than just a couple years, as well as kind of chapter 70 numbers, because do a quick, taking a quick look, our, our enrollment dropped from fiscal 18 to fiscal 19, but our chapter 70 numbers went up from, from fiscal 19 to fiscal 20 by about a million dollars. And so 
being able to kind of look back like maybe over a few more years of enrollments and kind of what our chapter 70 numbers look like might help give us kind of a better idea of, and, and then being able to bounce that off our, like when we finally do get our current enrollment to kind of give us a better idea of what kind of picture we might be looking at next year. Um, I think again, that, 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 I think that would be helpful. And again, with those kind of chapter 70 numbers and enrollment numbers going back, maybe routing it through business and finance would be a good starting point. Um, but I think, I think that'd be good information that would, again, help us as we're kind of looking at things going forward. Yeah. And, it, it, and again, you know, because this is so unprecedented and I think we're going to have a really hard time, you know, up until this year, we could, we could actually see trends. So, you, you know, you have a, a slight increase in chapter 70, slight decrease in population, uh, student, uh, student population. Um, this one, this is, this is so abnormal. Um, I think it's going to be hard to tie back to trends, but uh, it's definitely something that uh, Director Didi can um, bring forth at Business and Finance. It, we can definitely look at it, see if there's something that we can call out of it. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you both. Um, Member Mills with a really fast question. Sorry, from the re Oh, now, now it's not really fast. You muted yourself. Oh. Uh, um, so, in the, in the report, you mentioned still this binding deadline for a report for parents. We had this long conversation earlier today and didn't discuss whether you're going to reconsider what you're asking parents to decide by October 9th and when you're going to deliver the plan. So I ask you to just be sure that you're giving clarity to, to when and what it's reasonable to ask parents to decide so we don't revisit the problem that, we, that we've had. Because right now, your report seems to indicate a, a, a deadline that might not have a plan, right? Yep, I, I, I hear you on that. Thank you, Ken. All right. And I guess just for myself, just an off the cuff um, follow up question, Dr. McCall, do you have offhand the percentage of parents who have already committed to the survey? That would be a very question, but okay. um, Barry's not with us right now. I didn't, I didn't know if you're like, you're looking at like, oh gosh, we have half already. It's great. Yeah. But, it, Oh, I can speak to that. Barry can. Oh, yeah, I'm chiming in. It is about half, but oh, parents can the change Oracle. their responses if they want to, and uh -huh. there are instructions for that. Thank you. Uh, Member Silva. Just a quick question, and I'm not sure if this is something we can do, but I mean, as a school school committee member, of course, I want some general guidelines of what, you know, going back to school and choosing between hybrid and remote is. But as a parent, it's very hard for me to choose based on just these guidelines. Is there any way we can give parents like schedules of the kids of what hybrid would look like and what remote would look like for their child, not some generic version of it? Because depending upon the school, the classroom, the grade um, and the teacher, this could all be very different for each child. Yes. Yeah. So that's a very good question, Asima. So that's actually uh, something that we're defining, you know, right now we're working on that. Um, as we kind of look at, I, I think I mentioned this a little earlier, as we, we look at where we are in reference to um, teachers who are um, requesting leave this year, because um, again, that's something that has, you know, we've had an, a slight uptick in the number of teachers who are requesting to um, either work remotely or take a, a full leave of absence. So we're assessing that. That's going to come into, into play in terms of how um, the remote learning aspect of what we do is going to um, be rolled out. So we're looking at that through HR. That's going to tie back into the, the you know, how the models play out. Um, and I completely agree, uh, you know, having a, a generic um, idea of what is going, what it's going to look like is uh, a little more challenging to wrap your head around versus, oh, okay, here's what my schedule might look like if I have a sixth grader uh, over at, um, you know, Central Tree. Thank you very much. Um, Member Woodland, and then we might need another motion. Um, I uh, just want to reiterate, it's not just about the schedule, though, that parents need an update on. And I don't know if we really have given parents enough information to choose uh, by October 9th. Um, the answers given last week, some of them directly contradicted the documents that were in the email from the Friday before. Have those documents been updated? 
to reflect that so that it's all one cohesive communication. Um, because I, I just want to make sure it's not just about the schedule, it's about the instructional impacts. It's, uh, it's more than just the schedule um, of where everybody reports it, the time on learning. It's all kinds of things too that I don't believe we've had a comprehensive uh, answer to that doesn't change from meeting to meeting. Uh, so that is my point. So, right, so I was responding to Asma's question around a schedule. Um, you know, in reference to uh, specific documentation, let me take a look at, you know, what's still out there in reference to that. Um, but, you know, as we're looking at what we're, what we're doing, this is going to be something that gets defined a little bit more based upon those staff people and how that's going to play out right now. So we're looking at that. It's, it, you know, I'm hoping that's going to, you know, kind of come together you know, much faster now because um, those requests have been rolling in a little more frequently. Um, and, you know, what we don't want to do is put ourselves in a situation where we're, uh, you know, promising something that we, we aren't able to then follow through with, with uh, our staff members. So um, I hear what you're saying with that and we'll, we'll definitely make it more, uh, more clear for people. And, you know, we'll look at, we'll look at the timeline for uh, those decisions as well. Thank you. Um, Catherine, do you want to go quickly? Yeah, I was just wondering if when you get that farther information around schedules and more specifics about each individual building, could you email that all to the students as well, especially the middle and high school students, because they weren't sent the previous emails about hybrid or remote. So just knowing specifics about our schools would be helpful. Sure. What we can do is, um, if it goes out through School Messenger, um, I'll I'll probably have Principal Biendo send it directly out to to the students. Um, if something goes out through my email, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's someone else that works in the office, and because we do it through a School Messenger uh, account, but um, we can ensure that it goes out through individual buildings so that people get it directly from a principal. Okay. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions uh, further on the superintendent's report? Okay, seeing none, um, we can either have a motion to extend at this point and breeze through these minutes in about five minutes, or we can kick them to the next meeting up to you guys. Motion to extend for five minutes, is that allowed? I think we have to do a half an hour, even though we, we would just use a portion of that time. Okay, I can set forth the motion. All right, is there a second? A second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Ayala, yes. Member Bennett? Yes. Member Brown? No. Member Dennis? Dennis, no. Member Gustafson? Yes. Member Haber? Yes. Member Imber? Bob's not with us. Member Kirschenbaum? She left the meeting. Did leave. Member Lavoie? No. Member Long Belial? No. Member Mills? Mills, yes. Member Mitchell? It's gone. Ten minutes left. Um, Member Otmar? Otmar, no. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, no. Member Silva? Silva, yes. Member Smith? Christina, are you with us? I thought she was. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Member Williamson has left. Williamson, yes. Williamson, yes. Mm -hmm. Member Woodland is still with us. Woodland, yes. Yeah. And Member Young. Adam has left. Uh, the chair votes yes. I think we're now missing four members, which gives us 16. I have six no's, which means the most motion does still pass. Um, we have no unfinished business. Going to the secretary's report, um, I'm going to hold the executive session minutes. Um, we'll go to B, approval of the 1351 regular minutes of the Wachusett Regional School District Committee, held on September 14th as enclosed. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Second moved and seconded. Are there any changes to the minutes? Seeing none, roll call vote. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? 
Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Yes. Member Brown? Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Right, left. Member Gustafson? Gustafson, yes. Member Haber? Yes. Member Kirschenbaum? Left as well. Member Lavoie? Oops, same. Member Longvalil? Yes. Member Mills? Yes. yes. Um, Carl's also left. Member Shapiro? I'm still here, but I vote Hard yes. <laughs> I'm losing it. Uh, Member Shapiro? Shapiro just left. She just left. Member Silva? Silva, yes. Member Smith? Who has left? Member Williamson has left. <laughs> no, you're here. Kelly, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> yes. <Shapiro. laughs> All right. Um, Woodland? Woodland, yeah. Young has left. Week says yes. They are approved. Moving on. See approval of the executive session minutes. Those are also not in the report. We're going to hold those one more time. Approval of the 325 special meeting minutes um, held on September 23rd, 2020, as in closed. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any changes to those minutes? Seeing none, Amos. Okay, I'm going to lose who's here and who's not. Nicole's here, yes. Um, Ayala? Ayala, yes. Uh, Bennett? Yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Dennis has left. Gustafson? Gustafson, yes. Haber? Haber, yes. Ember has left. Kirschenbaum? Left. Lavoy? No. Long but wheel? Abstain. Mills? Yes. Mitchell is left. Otmar? Otmar, yes. Shapiro has left. Silva. Uh, Megan, which one are we voting on this one? On the special meeting minutes? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Christina has left. Uh, Williamson is here. Yes. Woodland is here. Woodland, yeah. And I am here. I vote yes. Um, for the treasurer's report and financial statements, please direct your questions to Director Didi. Um, committee reports, um, I'll just go very briefly. We met as management this week. Um, we are taking a very deep dive into the 1000 series of the um, of our, our policies to really look at how we govern ourselves as a school committee body. We're also going to be looking at some advocacy for the for this school year coming up, um, working with different stakeholders in order to kind of um, help us moving forward, both financially and then with constituents in our district that may help us um, kind of affirm our position with the different state people in our town. Um, we heard from each of the different committees and how they're moving forward with their different committee goals of the year. Um, we also heard from the superintendent um, on some updates um, that you heard tonight regarding um, the reopening plan. Um, question from member Otmar, I believe. Um, it was, oh, it was okay. me. Um, for, for an issue for management that I think we need to address is the regional agreement because it's set to yeah. um, expire in this May. So um, that's something that needs to be taken up. Yes. Um, Member Lavoie. One thing that I'd ask management to consider is as we think about the return to schools, mm -hmm. um, ways that whether it's we as a school committee continue to, to get feedback, whether it's through a special meeting yeah. or if it's more of um, for the chair appointing individuals to, to work with their towns for that feedback, I think it's, it's really paramount that we continue to be listeners um, to our to our constituents and it would be a, a really solid gesture to do something formally as a school committee. Yes, and uh, Matt, I'm sorry to miss that point. I did request that formally of the administration during the management meeting. Um, I asked them to kind of determine a frequency that works best for them, whether it's once a month or once every six weeks, um, and to have these meetings be smaller for the different communities um, and at different times, which the stakeholders um, could be able to attend. And I would, I would say as a school committee member, I would throw my hat in the ring to talk to the people in my community if, it, if, if we didn't want to put it all on administration. I think we can play a role in that as well. Thank you, Matt. That's really nice of you, and I appreciate that gesture. Um, 
Dr. McCall. And I think a lot of us would um, do the same in our communities as well to either help support you or, or to act as a facilitator in those meetings um, so that you are, you know, if you, you tag Bob or you tag a principal, um, you don't have to do it all yourself, but we, I'm sure all of us would be willing to help support you in our different communities. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> and again, you know, um, I just had my meeting with the boards of health uh, on Monday, um, where we, you know, reviewed kind of uh, where we are as a as a community right now in terms of uh, our COVID cases, and um, all of our nurses sat in on that meeting. So, um, you know, it we we actually have a, a really cohesive group of people working on this right now. So it's it's helpful, and that might be beneficial in terms of maybe pulling up a report that we can share with uh, the committee and the community after that. That would be wonderful. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for reminding me. I appreciate it. Um, Ed Sub, um, Christina's not here any longer. Um, Linda, your vice chair, do you have, and I believe, did Linda leave as well? Well, our meeting uh, tonight was canceled. Um, and I don't think we, because of the special meeting, I don't think we have a meeting set up yet, um, but we will take care of that forthwith. Thank you, Linda. Uh, business finance, um, member Dennis has left us. Uh, member Mills, your vice chair. Hmm. <laughs> I'm super prepared for that. Um, I I believe we have a meeting next week, right? So I don't believe we've met since our last meeting. Leia, you can shake your nod to that one. So um, I think that our meeting is, is I want to say the fifth, right? It is the fifth because it overlaps with the CPAC meeting. So, um, okay. but that's okay. I'll be joining you all late. Um, but yes, it is the fifth at seven, I believe. Thank you guys. Uh, legal, we meet Scott. We do. We meet tomorrow at seven o'clock. We have a full agenda to go over a lot of bargaining, uh, go over our transportation um, and uh, turf field. All right. Thank you, Member Brown. Um, Superintendent Goals and Evaluation, Member Mills again. We met last week. We talked about indicator district indicators. We talked about uh, giving the, feed, the the superintendent some feedback on some initial ideas for goals that we bounced around, and we talked about methods for getting 360 degree feedback as part of a, an evaluation process. Thank you. Facilities, Member Young, who is not with us. Vice Chair is Member Woodland. Um, we haven't met since the last school me committee meeting. We don't have one scheduled yet, so I'm sure that'll be coming up. All right. Um, diversity, Member Silva. Uh, we met and we had a great presentation from Director Keenan. That was very informational, and I, and I think all of the members learned a lot. Um, we are going to be meeting this Thursday, and we're, we're, we did some short-term and long-term goals, and we're going to start with some reviews, reviewing some policies. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, there is no one from audit here. We have no ad hoc subcommittees, um, no building committees. Have school councils met yet or not quite yet? Okay, seeing none. Um, nope, Megan. Yep. Oh. Just going to remind everyone of the CPAC meeting on the 5th yeah. at 6.30 because it is important. They can't carry on their business unless they have their elections held. Um, they were delayed from the spring due to COVID. So at 6.30, please log on. Um, they do have to have them in a Zoom format and I am count them and then I'm going to business and finance. So please come. Um, there'll be updates from, um, I mean, I'm not begging people, but I'm just reminding people that it's coming up. Um, because it is an important process and they can't function without officers. Um, also, they're still accepting nominations, I believe, um, for a couple more days. If anyone goes to their website or their Facebook page, they can find the descriptions of the officers and they are accepting nominations. And then we'll have elections starting at 630. Um, and then following elections, there'll be updates from Christine Smith. All right, wonderful. And I did miss one public comment. So I'm always happy to keep my email open. So when I do make a mistake, someone lets me know. Um, so one public hearing comment tonight um, from Lauren Salomon Garrett at 49 Cook Street in Holden. I think during all of this, it'd be helpful for anyone with an opinion to have a few fundamental facts before them. One, Wachusett is the 24th largest school district in the state out of 319 districts. In enrollment, we're bigger than Lemonster, Malden, and Cambridge. We are big, but we don't act like it. Two, Wachusett spent the last three, spent the third least on administration in the state as reported by the state for FY19. We spend very little to run our massive district. Dr. McCall has referenced our lean administration many times, and it should be noted, we are big, but we don't act like it. 
Three, we have been underfunded for years by the state and ourselves. We are the largest regional school district in the state. We can have a big voice in advocacy to fight for more from the state, but we are big and don't act like it. In one way that we do act big is the size of our school committee. 22 members and their varied opinions and experiences is a huge body to make decisions in a timely and effective manner. It creates frustration when the members can't speak to all their constituents' concerns because they're limited to three minutes to speak, two minutes or no time at all. After we have stabilized our district and the pandemic has passed, I think the five towns in this district need to take a long look at their district and start to help it by acting big where it counts by creating a smaller committee to be more effective. We are big, let's act like it. With that, um, is there any new business that members wish to put on a future agenda? That was a very nice way to close. Again, um, as we've done for the past two me meetings, if you have a request for information for the administration, please do forward it to me. I do forward that to the administration um, verbatim from what you guys say. Uh, so please do keep those coming. With that, um, we'll call for an adjournment. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote for those who are left with us. Member Amos? Yes. Ayala? Ayala, yes. Bennett? Yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Gustafson? Yes. Haber? Yes. Kirschenbaum? Lavoy? Yes. Longbulio? Longbulio, yes. Mills? Mills, yes. Otmar? Otmar, yes. Shapiro's left Silva? Silva, yes. Uh, Williamson? Yes. Woodland? Woodland, yes. Young? And the chair votes yes. I will see you guys shortly. Thank you for a great evening tonight. Thank you, Megan. Take care. Take care.